In the last class, we discussed the Schrodinger and the Heisenberg pictures of time evolution. In this session, we shall move on to the Heisenberg equation of motion. To derive the Heisenberg equation of motion, we shall assume that the Schrodinger picture operator AS has no explicit dependence on time. This means that the partial derivative of the Schrodinger picture operator with respect to time can be taken as zero. But in the last class, we already said that the Schrodinger picture operator does not depend on time. Then why do we have to assume this again? The reason is that there can be situations where the Schrodinger picture operator depends explicitly on time. For example, we talked about the Hamiltonian operator corresponding to the interaction uh, of the electron spin with an external magnetic field. If the external magnetic field changes with time, then the Hamiltonian also would change with time. This is an example for an explicit time dependence. This time dependence comes because the magnetic field, the external magnetic field changes with time. So here we are assuming that the Schrodinger picture operators do not have such explicit time dependence. Okay. Now this is true for most physical situations of interest. We start with the expression relating the Heisenberg picture operator at time t to the Schrodinger picture operator. We saw that a h of t is equal to u dagger a s u, where a s, the Schrodinger picture operator, is the same as the Heisenberg picture operator at time t equal to zero. The Schrodinger picture operator does not change with time, so it's always the same as a h of zero. Now let's differentiate this expression with respect to time. So the left hand side is written as d a h by d t. All right, this is equal to time derivative of u dagger of t a s u of t. Here we have a product of functions, so we have to use the product rule. Let's take this as the first function and this as the second function. So if we expand this time derivative, we get the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second function. And let me write the derivative of the first function as a partial time derivative. I write this as a partial time derivative because you should actually u dagger has two arguments t and t0. Here we have used a shorthand notation where t0 equal to 0 and u of t comma 0 is simply denoted as u of t. But generally it has two arguments and by saying that the derivative is a partial time derivative, we mean that we are taking derivative only with respect to t. Okay. So this becomes the partial time derivative of u dagger of t multiplied by the second function. Okay. Plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. Okay. Now we already assumed that the Schrodinger picture operator has no explicit time dependence. Now by definition, the Schrodinger picture operator also has no implicit time dependence. It has no quantum mechanical time evolution. This means that the time derivative of uh, A s is zero. It does not change with time. So we can pull this out of the derivative and the second term here becomes u dagger of t A s and the time derivative of u of t, again we write it as a partial derivative for the reason mentioned just before. Okay, now this is the expression that we have here d a h by d t is equal to partial time derivative of u dagger multiplied by a s u plus u dagger a s multiplied by partial time derivative of u. Okay, this is what we found. Now here we have got the partial time derivative of u dagger and the partial time derivative of u. And for this, we can make use of the Schrodinger equation obeyed by u. We already saw that the time uh, evolution operator u of t comma t0 obeys, a Schrodinger, obeys the Schrodinger equation ih bar partial time derivative of u of t comma t0 is equal to the Hamiltonian multiplied by u of t comma t0. Okay. Now we can divide this throughout by ih bar and we get the partial time derivative of u of t comma t0 as 1 divided by ih bar h u. Right? So we can write the partial time derivative here as 1 divided by ih bar h u. 
We also need the partial time derivative of u dagger. It can be found simply by taking the Hermitian conjugate of this expression. So if you take the Hermitian conjugate, we get the partial time derivative of u dagger of t comma t0 is equal to, okay, here we have got a product of operators. So when we take the Hermitian conjugate, you get uh, u dagger h because we know that a b dagger is equal to b dagger a dagger, okay. And here we also have an i, and if you take the Hermitian conjugate, i goes to minus i. So if the Hermitian conjugate of this expression is partial time derivative of u dagger is equal to minus 1 divided by i h bar u dagger h. Now we can substitute for partial time derivative of u and partial time derivative of u dagger from these two equations into this equation. Okay. In this expression for dAh by dt, let's substitute for partial time derivative of u dagger with this minus 1 by ih bar u dagger h. Okay, so this term becomes minus 1 by ih bar u dagger h asu. Okay, also here we have got partial time derivative of u which can be written as 1 divided by ih bar hu. So the second term becomes 1 divided by ih bar u dagger a s h u. All right. Now here you see that you have got the Schrodinger picture operator multiplied by u. If we had a u dagger in here, we could write it, write this entire thing as the Heisenberg picture operator at time t. Right. But we cannot simply insert a u dagger here, but we can insert a u u dagger in here because u u dagger is the identity operator by the unitarity property. All right, this is the unitarity property of time evolution operator. So let's introduce a u u dagger in here. All right, in between h and a s here and in between a s and h here. All right, so we get d a h by d t is equal to minus 1 divided by i h bar u dagger h. And here we have inserted a u u dagger. The rest of the expression is the same a s u plus 1 divided by i h bar u dagger a s. And in between a s and h we are inserting a u u dagger okay now we see that here we have got a u dagger a s u and here also we have got a u dagger a s u what is this this is a h of t this is also a h of t okay so this expression now becomes d a h by d t is equal to Let's pull this 1 divided by ih bar outside. Let's write the positive term first, right? which is this term. This is a h of t multiplied by u dagger h u. Right? And what do we have here? Minus, right? minus u dagger h u multiplied by a h. So this is u dagger h u multiplied by a h of t okay now this is of the form operator a multiplied by operator b multiplied minus operator b multiplied by operator a all right this is nothing but the commutator of these two operators so we can write this as one divided by ih bar the commutator of a h of t with u dagger h u okay so that's the expression we have here d a h by dt is equal to 1 divided by ih bar the heisenberg picture of the commutator of the heisenberg picture operator with u dagger h u okay so we have time derivative of a h is equal to 1 divided by ih bar multiplied by the commutator of a h with u dagger h u now if you remember this hamiltonian came from the schrodinger equation satisfied by the time evolution operator and we had the Schrodinger equation for the time evolution operator when we were discussing the time evolution of state gets. Okay, and uh, time evolution of state gets happen in the Schrodinger picture, which means that the Hamiltonian sitting here is the Hamiltonian in the Schrodinger picture. This is HS. So the Hamiltonian here is the Schrodinger picture Hamiltonian. But U dagger Schrodinger picture operator multiplied by U is actually the Heisenberg picture operator. All right. So you may think that we may write this u dagger h u as the, Hamil the, the Heisenberg picture Hamiltonian. Okay. 
but we don't need to do this in elementary applications because in elementary applications we are considering the case where the hamiltonian does not depend on time explicitly in that case we say that u is u has the form exponential minus i h t divided by h bar now this is a function of the hamiltonian the hamiltonian does not change with time so this commutes with the hamiltonian all right a function of an operator commutes with the operator itself now if the operator is time dependent then this gets complicated all right but here the operator does not depend on time so this commutator is true which means that the time evolution operator commutes with the hamiltonian which means that this u dagger h u can be written as u dagger u h and u dagger u is the identity operator so u dagger h u is simply the hamiltonian itself okay if u is equal to exponential minus i h t divided by h bar okay so this means that we can finally write this time derivative for the heisenberg operator d a h by d t is equal to 1 divided by i h bar the commutator of the heisenberg picture operator with the hamiltonian okay so we get d a h by d t is equal to 1 divided by i h bar multiplied by the commutator of a h with the hamiltonian okay this equation is known as the heisenberg equation of motion i hope the heisenberg equation of motion looks familiar to you because when we studied classical mechanics we talked about the poisson bracket formalism of classical mechanics over there we saw that for a function a of q and p position and momentum this is some function of q and p without an explicit dependence dependence on time right so if a is a function of q and p and if a has no explicit dependence on time we saw that we can write the equation of motion like this the time derivative of a is equal to the poisson bracket right the poisson bracket of a with h where h was the classical hamiltonian now you see that these two equations look very similar what are the differences over here we have got a function of q and p here we have got an operator okay and here this bracket is the poisson bracket whereas here this bracket is the commutator again a and h in here as are functions whereas a and h in here are operators also there is no 1 divided by i h bar here here we have got a 1 divided by i h bar okay in the first chapter we discussed what's called as dirac's quantization rule dirac's quantization rule says that various quantum mechanical relations can be obtained from the corresponding classical relations just by replacing the poisson brackets by commutators in this way so you take the classical expressions write them in terms of poisson brackets and you replace the classical poisson bracket by a commutator divided by i h bar and this will give us the corresponding quantum mechanical relation this is dirac's quantization rule we see that it works here also because in classical mechanics we have da dt da by dt is equal to the poisson bracket of a with h let me write simply as pb standing for poisson bracket okay now according to dirac's quantization rule we can get the corresponding equation in quantum mechanics by writing d a by d t is equal to the commutator of a with h divided by i h bar okay of course this is in the heisenberg picture so let me put an h in here so here also we see that dirac's quantization rule gives the correct result uh, the correct equation in quantum mechanics in this case also okay now historically this equation was first written down by dirac himself but for some reason he chose to call it as heisenberg equation of motion okay maybe because of his modesty you may note that we cannot get all quantum mechanical equations in this way all right because in quantum mechanics there are observables which have no classical analog so this equation works also for observables with no classical analog for example we talked about the spin operator there is no such thing as spin in classical mechanics it's purely quantum mechanical but the spin operator also satisfies an equation of this form we can write dsi by dt in the heisenberg picture is equal to 1 divided by ih bar multiplied by the commutator of si with h 
this equation actually works and we can discuss spin precession etc using this equation also but this equation has no classical analog we have no such equation in classical mechanics because the spin here right it's not a function of q and p so in classical mechanics we don't have an equation corresponding to this this means that there are equations in quantum mechanics which cannot be obtained by Dirac's quantization rule. In other words, we can't obtain all of quantum mechanics from classical mechanics alone. But the converse is actually true. We can obtain all classical mechanical relations from the corresponding quantum mechanical relations. We just invert the procedure. You write the quantum mechanical relations and instead of the Poisson bracket, sorry, instead of commutator divided by IH bar, you replace it with the Poisson bracket and you will get the corresponding classical mechanical relations provided we are talking about quantities with classical analogs so if you need a classical mechanical equation for a classical mechanical quantity you take the corresponding quantum mechanical equation and replace the commutator divided by ih bar with the Poisson bracket this always works in other words classical mechanics can be derived from quantum mechanics but the opposite is not true. So quantum mechanics is more fundamental than classical mechanics. Classical mechanics is, is on, is, classical mechanics is only an approximation and not a fundamental description of physical reality. In this class, we discussed the Heisenberg equation of motion. We started with the expression relating the Heisenberg picture operator with the Schrodinger picture operator. Then we took the time derivative and we saw that we can write this as 1 divided by IH bar commutator of AH with the Hamiltonian. This is called the Heisenberg equation of motion. We remarked that this looks very similar to the classical mechanical case where for a function of Q and P, A of Q comma P, and if A does not explicitly depend on time, we had the equation dA by dt is equal to the Poisson bracket of A with the Hamiltonian. This is a classical mechanical relation and this is a quantum mechanical relation. Right? So we said that the Dirac's quantization rule actually works. We just have to take the classical mechanical relation and replace the Poisson bracket, replace the Poisson bracket by the commutator divided by IH bar to get the corresponding quantum mechanical relation. But then we saw that this procedure, Dirac's quantization rule, cannot give us all quantum mechanical equations, right? Because there are equations in quantum mechanics uh, which have no classical mechanical analogs. So we can't get all quantum mechanics from classical mechanics, but the converse is true. We can get all classical mechanics from quantum mechanics. All you have to do is that you take the, commit, the quantum mechanical relation and replace the, post, the commutator divided by IH bar by the Poisson bracket. Okay, this will give the correct classical mechanical equation. This means that classical mechanics is only an approximation of quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics is the fundamental description of physical reality. Okay, with that I shall conclude. Thank you.